Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona, with... You know, the man I go to, I get my goodies. And uh, real goodies, commodity goodies. You know, stuff that has some real value. It's gold and silver, American precious metals. A-M-P-A-Z.com, Jerry Williams. You know, I'm I'm looking at the pricing today. And Friday, it took a dump down to, what was the low? 33, something like that? It was, 33.50, Ernie. You know, 33.50. And today it already broke. It was at thirty eight. It's at thirteen thirty seven fifty eight right now. From what I'm looking at, that's a closing, and I'm looking at an after hours market, which does trade right all clear up to four thirty at thirty seven ninety five. Yeah, you know, I mean five. So what is that? Five dollars. You know, I, I'm just you know five dollar swing over the weekend, and that guy uh, needs to be kicking himself in the butt for even buying it. Because, you know, I mean, if you don't know why you're doing it, you're just being dummy, you know. So I looked at a lot of, we took, after we had purchased, I just share this with the audience. After we, we have safe and guns, so don't get any ideas. And not all of it's here, so there, you know, okay. <laughs> so just FYI. But um, we took the, the silver that we had gotten from you. And I like separating out the dimes, get the old mercury dimes. And because when we make those little laminated cards, you know, we do the wallet voting thing and so on, it's easier to have the mercury dimes because it's obvious that it's an older one instead of having to put on your reading glasses to be able to see the date. I'm always kind of like, well, what's that? Is that pre-64? So we separate all the old ones out, you know, the even older ones, so that we can put those in there and have some fun with that. Now, as I'm going through this, I was looking at the pricing of over the years, different lots that I had purchased and I, the vast majority of it, I bought between $10 and $13. And now, so when it goes from 50 down to 33, I'm still not, you know, feeling too bad. You know what I mean? Yes, as long as it's paid for. <clears throat> so, so I'm looking at uh, somebody that would come in and get it. I'm wondering what are the conversations, conversations you are having with people like me that come in when it goes down, they're in there buying. You and know? then they should be. Well, what's the uh, difference to, between uh, that and the people that are selling? G- give me some stories. Well, the people who are selling, uh, w- with a couple of exceptions, I had some people thought that it was just about maxed out, and so they sold just to uh, to take some profits. Uh, there's a few of those. But most people, by and large, who've been at it a while, the people who bought it at $5, 10 12 they didn't sell anything. They still have the faith that it's going up into the $150, $200 range. And like I said before, they may well be right because there is a finite amount of silver. And there is not an, there's infinite amount of money with few really good alternatives uh, for investing. And silver is one of those things that's caught on now with the public. Everybody's looking at it day to day, moment to moment. And the guy who just bought at 48 and he sees it down under 40, he's uh, if he's not very sophisticated, why well, he's sweating. And I've often said that if you're not sweating, you haven't invested properly because that's <laughs> what you should do. Of course, is maybe buy some more, but that's very that's against human nature to do that. But so uh, he sells, and now he feels relieved that he he can't take any more pain. But of course, the pain is there. It's it's, and he you know he's got bragging rights now. The terrible loss that he took, and what a lousy investment it was, and that he'll spread that around. But uh, there aren't too many people like that. But it's always the latecomers that really uh, bought on somebody else's recommendation. And I always try to tell people, don't be too price conscious. Think of this like you would think of your home. You don't price that every 15 minutes or every day or every week or every month. You buy it, you put it away, you kind of forget about it. But having said that, people will uh, they'll panic anyway. I'll tell you what my panic was. My panic was not getting down there fast enough on Monday morning. Because when Friday it went, it started going down, it took the, um, it was, uh, oh, it, it took the real hit uh, last, a week ago. Well, yeah, Friday, the, uh, Friday, the, the uh, well, the 29th is when it made the high. No, it was a Sunday that it dropped six dollars and fifteen minutes. Yeah, and that was Monday morning. We opened it uh, on the first or the second, rather, and that was when we got the big uh, the big drop down to. I want to see. No, it was still up that morning. It was Tuesday. Nope, no, what? It was a Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Thursday, uh, the fifth. 
We dropped from 39.30 the day before, which is already down $10 from the high. Uh, we dropped another uh, $5 intraday, and then it closed at 34.50. Yeah, no, no. I remember it was last Sunday or going into Monday morning, and it when it dropped six dollars in 15 minutes over. I tell you how we knew. Okay, this is this is. The process is we went through. there, though, but it did trade down there. You're right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let me let me walk you through this, what I was looking for. Sunday afternoon, I got a call from an economic um, columnist or uh, reporter we have, Jack Gregson. He says, Obama's going to make an announcement. Here comes Obama. Obama's, you know, White House Obama, okay? And I'm like, man, if they're going to be doing some big, first thing you got to check, are we going into war in Syria, Iran, What's happening to gold and silver? What's happening with the dollar denomination of assets from China? Are they dumping it? I go, we as soon as they're trying to distract you over here, you need to be checking a bunch of other stuff. Right. And immediately when I when they made that announcement, about an hour before something is when silver took a dump. And I go, Ah, okay, you know, here we go. Somebody's playing games. So I go, all right. So then I went, the next week I just said, okay, I want to liquidate my assets in the TD Ameritrade, you know, close out the account. No, I don't need to keep it open. Just don't give my money. Put it in. As soon as we could get it, I went, it's, uh, uh, we get into, uh, finally, you know, it funds and all that kind of stuff. You got to wait for your money. That's one of the problems right there. I can just go down to you get my money. But I go, so Donna, Monday, I said, Monday morning, whatever it is, it's going to be pretty low. Then I go, you, you need to get down there and get as much as we have here in silver into uh, various different things that she got. So I go, go. And it hit almost 33. And she's like, well, I need to stop by the whatever. I need to go shopping. Yeah, and I go, no, no, run, <laughs> run, get down and run. So when she called me, she's in your office. Well, what would you want? I go, you just got there. I expect you to go home by now. Oh, my goodness. You just... If she'd got there a little bit earlier, you know, the premium that I paid you, I could have made up already. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you're shooting at a moving target, and it's a fast-moving target. Yeah, I know, but it's just a good point to make is that, you know, this it, the, the amount of premium that I paid on the silver, by the end of the day, I doubled it. So I'm going, you know, okay, you know, so, you know, good investment. And I know a lot of people that understand, that look at investment in gold and silver this way. It is the confidence... Not in the metal or the silver or anything. That's not the point. It's a wealth retention thing. It's the confidence of the government devaluing the dollar. If you know they're going to do that, man, you can't get enough metals. So this is kind of how I'm looking at it. What, what do you What do you think is going to happen over there? You were starting to you, uh, talk about what Ben Bernanke had to say and people reacting to that. Go ahead and finish well, that thought. On the one thing hand, he can look at the camera in a straight face and says, say there's no inflation, which we all know isn't true. I mean, it's there if you go to a store. Maybe he doesn't go shopping, but at any rate, there is inflation, whether he denies it or not. But then when he says at the same time, uh, we don't anticipate uh, more expansion of the money supply, uh, that seems to be hard to believe as well, because what they've done so far hasn't generated the, uh, the kind of growth in the economy that, that they had anticipated. So when they're looking at GDP of 4% and we're only getting 2 with all this money that's been created, obviously they're going to have to try and create more money, which means more inflation. More inflation's are coming. Yes. You'll check it out. APMAZ.com. For those of you here in Phoenix, Jerry Williams will take care of you. Thanks for coming on, Jerry. I appreciate the update. You bet, Ernie. Anytime.